Canadian Cardinal Mark Ouellette is in the spotlight as a possible contender for the papacy. He's risen to the upper echelons of the Catholic Church, but his career in the priesthood began in a small town in Quebec. Mike Armstrong is in La Motte tonight. Mike. Well, Robin, it's hard to believe a man raised in a town this small, population less than 450, is a contender to lead a church of 1.2 billion around the world. The old expression is all roads lead to Rome. It feels like that applies to Rang Trois, Range Road 3, here in La Motte tonight. Marc Ouellette's story starts right here. Born in La Motte, the 8th of June, 1944, he was baptized in what was then St. Luke Church. It's a community center now. They only hold services every second week and then for only a handful of people. But Willette grew up at a time when the Catholic Church was very much the center of the community. The family lived about three kilometers from the church on this lot. There was also a schoolhouse here run by his father. Ça, mon mari. His mother is still alive today and lives with his brother Louis. 90-year-old yeah. Graziella remembers Marc as a very good boy. C'était-tu un bon garçon, Marc? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that grew up fishing and swimming and fairly typical. He was a strong student, but did get into the occasional trouble. His brother says there was an incident with matches in the family barn. And he put the hay on fire. And, we, um, and the barn almost burned down. Now, hockey was one of Willette's passions growing up and had a lot to do with his calling. He was 17 and playing a game in Amos, just north of his hometown. He hurt his leg and, while recovering, picked up a book about a saint. Willette was inspired and spent the next several years trying to convince his father to let him join the priesthood. It was in the Lemma Church that Marc Willette was ordained May 26, 1968. It was a very big event, with just about the whole town turning out. Willette moved to Val d'Or, about a half hour away, and became vicar at St. Sauveur Church. He kept playing hockey. This was a shoe store team he played for, but he eventually moved on. Willette would return home to La Motte to visit, but spent the next three decades studying and teaching, based in Canada, Rome, and Colombia. In 2002, Willette returned to his home province as Archbishop of Quebec City. Al Cardinale Marc Ouillet. A year later, his promotion to Cardinal, a position and ceremony Willette said recently impressed his mother. After what she told me, you belong to the church. I will not insist anymore for you to come home and visit. The new cardinal was welcomed home a hero by supporters, but admitted he had work ahead of him. We know that it is difficult uh, to live out, you know, in a sort of atmosphere of free sex. Well, let's efforts at outreach were often criticized as out of touch with modern Quebec's secular society. Abortion is a, a very serious moral disorder. The Cardinal has spent the last two and a half years based at the Vatican as prefect of the Congregation for Bishops. It had him close to Pope Benedict and selecting bishops. That strong political position is one of the reasons some have Willette on the short list as potential Pope. I don't see myself at this level, uh, uh, n not at all. Despite the nerves, Willette says he will serve if chosen. It would mean a ceremony much bigger than that first one. Mike, obviously the spotlight is on Vatican City, but also on La Motte. What's the buzz been like there? <laughs> well, this is about as much excitement as this town's ever seen. We've got three satellite trucks with another three on the way. Spoke to the mayor this afternoon, and he said they're expecting 55 journalists. People don't move to this town for the action. They move to get away from it all. Well, the action came to them this week. Robin? And there's no doubt about that. Thanks very much, Mike. Mike Armstrong reporting tonight. <laughs> Thank you. And if you have a question about the conclave, submit it online to our website, globalnews.ca. Tomorrow, the first interactive question and answer session begins at 1 p.m. Eastern.